Mabrika Taihue, Dakana Gwenum Maunuesh, Dagwariko Kawas Boriken, Dakana Taino Oria Caribe Boriqua Caniba. So today I want to talk directly to my fellow Caribbeans. If you have Taino or Arawak ancestry, this video is for you. I'm going to be explaining how to do and create your own ceremonial regalia for the Taino tribe and how they actually did their traditional body makeup and body paint. If you have Taino or Arawak ancestry, this video is for you. So this isn't for costume, this is how you do it traditionally for real. Today is my first powwow ever representing the Taino people and I wanted to make sure that we did all of the things correctly so this wouldn't be a costume, this is actual regalia, using the traditions and using all the things that the Taino people would have done. A lot of my sources also come from the Taino blogs that I see for the ceremonies that are still continuing today in modern day. Now I've done my research and I understand traditionally how they would have done their body and face paint. However, I took artistic liberty and used contemporary makeup combined with actual Taino designs. And I know historically how Tainos would have actually dressed, covering up a little bit more than traditionally Taino people would have dressed. That way we can adhere to our modern day sensibilities of modesty. So traditionally, Taino people and Arawak Indians would have used a natto seed or a chiote dye in order to create a red dye that would have stained or pigmented your skin, along with hagua, which is made from the hagua nut, which would have created the black, and that stains the skin also. So these are things that they would have worn for longer periods of time. So here's the whole outfit. Um, traditionally, they would have worn this very apron-like skirt and do designs according to the Taino Semi. Uh, they would have also done body painting using that um, anato seed or hagua all over their bodies too. Now they would have collected things like black and red coral, tiburon or shark teeth, that's a Taino word, tiburon, cowrie shells, and they would have done trade with the Maya and other Native Americans from South America trading jadeite or jasper. Now in the skirt, I also included Larimar, which can only be found in the Dominican Republic and Mother of Pearl and Sea Urchin Spikes as well. Now for modesty purposes, I did wear shorts underneath and traditionally women would have been topless as well. And so now let me break down what these symbols mean and what it represents. Taino symbols and creating your design. There are various different types of Taino symbols from the petroglyphs that you can find. So as you can see here in my notes, I tried my best to collect all of the symbols that I could possibly find for the Taino spirituality. So if you want, you can take a second, pause this video, and take a look. I also tried to find the symbols for the different semi, so some of this research I need to update, so forgive me if some of this research isn't up to date. But these are some of the symbols that I did find for the Taino semi. There's also all kinds of books and resources in the description box below if you want to take a look and do your own research into what kind of symbolism, what kind of meaning you want your skirt to say. So on my YouTube channel, I'm talking about the Taino creation stories. This is what the back of my skirt represents, is the Taino creation story. So if you want to learn more about that, make sure you check out my other videos where I go more in-depth about Taino Espiritismo and their stories, keeping that oral tradition alive. As for the front of my skirt, this is more representative of myself and my own identity. So here you can see the sun and the moon because my Taino name, Wainun Maunuesh, means daughter of the sun and moon. Maunuesh being a name or a title for a woman from Borikin or Puerto Rico. So this is why I have the Taino frog and the Maga flower. Now these are the symbols of the eternal lovers, amantes eternos, and it represents my husband and I. Now I also wanted to include other precious things that can be found in the Caribbean and on these islands. So that's why I wanted to include these sea urchin spikes, cowrie shells, and these mother of pearl, which are beautiful. And along the top of the skirt, Along the drawstring of the skirt, you can see all these Larimar stones and some more mother of pearl in small discs. I wanted to include this because Larimar 
these blue stones, these blue gemstones can only be found in the Dominican Republic. So this is a gemstone of the Caribbean, uniquely to the Caribbean. Now as for the rest of the outfit, for guys they can kind of go shirtless. As for women, I just wanted to wear a tube top. You can see a lot of women in modern day arreitos just wearing a simple tank top or a shirt of some sort. As long as they're comfortable, I think that's what really matters. Also, if you have more information about ceremonial regalia for the Taino people or other Caribbean islanders, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to gain more information for things regarding headdresses and specific colors. Now, after you study the Taino symbolism, get yourself a sketchbook and draw up different designs that you would like for your regalia. This way you can experiment with different compositions until you find a design that you like. When you do, get yourself some colored markers and then work on composition and the color design. How do you want the colors to be organized in your design? Now, I know that some people will like to use acrylic paint to paint on their design. I do not recommend this because acrylic paint is water soluble. This means that you will not be able to wash your skirt in the laundry, so acrylic paint is not laundry safe. That is why I recommend instead that people get fabric markers. So these are different permanent markers that you can use on fabric. They're very popular for using on sneakers and jackets and things like that. So by practicing in your sketchbook or on your graph paper, you can figure out how you want the color scheme and the design for your skirt ahead of time. That way you'll be prepared to do it permanently with these fabric markers. Now, one piece of advice I will say about these fabric markers is that some of the marketing for it is a little bit misleading. If you see fabric markers that say washable, that means that it can be erased. So if you want to remove some of the fabric off of there. So make sure that whichever fabric markers that you're using are the permanent laundry safe type. And of course, you can always ask an employee at your local craft store, which would be the permanent type of marker. Now, if you don't know how to transfer your sketch onto the skirt, let me give you a little bit of advice of how to do that, okay? I want you to pretend that it's graph paper. If you have graph paper at home, then make sure that you use this instead of a sketchbook because it'll be way easier to measure out what the dimensions are for your design. So graph paper is the same type of paper that you might use in math class to draw different graphs and different formulas. So this is specifically like for math or for other studies like that, but I think it's fantastic for figuring out the dimensions and transferring your design from a sketch to whatever medium you're gonna use. So I use this a lot when I'm doing my paintings. I'll sketch on here, and then if I wanna make it bigger, I can do that and transfer it from these dimensions to a bigger one if I have a big canvas and a big painting. So let's pretend you have the symbol for Gwei, the sun, right? So you can measure where's the middle of the circle, where's the middle over here, and you can measure that out, right? Another way of doing this, if you remember from math class, is you can use a compass to make sure that the circle is perfect. That's another way of doing that too. You can make sure you have perfect circles. But for now, this is just demonstration, so we're not going to worry about that. And remember, if your skirt has different dimensions for the rectangle, you can also measure that in your dimensions on your graph paper. So pretend maybe one square is half an inch. What is the measurement, the width and the length for your skirt? That way you will make sure this fits properly when you're transferring the design from here to your skirt. You will have the exact same dimensions. So, Let's say, you know, it's, you know, 30 inches across or whatever. You can measure. If this is half an inch, then you can measure how long, how wide you need it to be on your graph paper. That way the design isn't going to warp. If you're not an artist, then you can look up, you know, people that can draw. You know, you can hire somebody to draw it for you. If there's other Puerto Ricans or Dominicans, other artists in your area, you can have them draw something for you and maybe support them by you know hiring them and compensating them as a client 
Now, also keep in mind that these different symbols may mean different things. So, for example, uh, there's a symbol for a bejique or a cacique. If that isn't your rank, then maybe don't use those symbols, you know? So these are important symbols to the Taino people, but they're also symbols of social ranking as well. So if you're not a trained bejique, if you're not a cacique of your tribe, um, then I wouldn't want to misappropriate those symbols. But use whichever symbols you think would be appropriate. Just don't forget that these symbols also have meaning, so make sure that you research what the meaning of those may be, and I will have links for those in the description box below. So that way you can do your own research and figure out uh, which symbols you want to use in your regalia. And it doesn't have to be elaborate either. So for example, maybe you only want the symbol for the sun, or you only want the symbol for Atabe. You don't have to make it as complicated. You can make it as simple as you want too. So it, you can make it as complicated or simple as you want. Sewing the skirt, a step-by-step -step process. So I did a little graphic just to help make sure that I'm illustrating this perfectly and clearly for you guys, okay? So this skirt needs to be around your waist and end at the top of your knees. That means that you need to double the length of it, fold it over. So that is lengthwise, you're doubling this length, okay? Now keep in mind, this is the true center where you're going to be folding it, right? So if you need the pocket for the drawstring to be one and a half inches, you need to double that length, okay? So it's one and a half inches on this side, one and a half inches on the other side for when you fold it over. That means it needs to be three inches from here to here along the true center, okay? That way when you fold it, it will be the proper length that you need. So these are all the steps that you need to do. Number one, you're going to hem all the edges all the way around before folding it over. Second step is when you fold it right in that center, so that true center, okay? And then you're going to connect it while leaving a pocket. So that means you're going to start and then connect both sides and then create that pocket. This is folded. This is connected along with the rest of this rectangle here. And then you're going to do this two times for the front of the skirt and the back of the skirt. This is one piece of the skirt, the front and the back. So I bought about three yards of burlap or cotton from my local Joanne fabric store. Now remember, you need to do this process twice, once for the front, once for the back. This is how it actually looked like as I was sewing it. So this is actual video footage of me sewing it, and as you can see, I left a pocket in for the drawstring. My biggest piece of advice is to make sure you're measuring everything preemptively. And this is the brand of fabric marker I got. So I flipped the skirt onto the back. This way you can check out all the seams and how I sewed this properly. Now, keep in mind, you need this pocket here for the drawstring, so when you're connecting, both layers of the skirt, you're connecting it along the sides, the bottom, the other side, and then this right here so that it creates the pocket, okay? So the only thing that you're doing up here is hemming this side and then folding it over upon its true center. And you're going to repeat this process with the back side. So this skirt comes in two pieces, the front and the back, and both of them are layered. You don't have to layer it, so that's another thing to keep in mind. If you think that it's opaque enough and it's not going to be transparent, you don't have to layer it. But I wanted to include this process of how I made mine. So, like I said in my graphic, you're going to have this length doubled, and then this is the true center where you're folding it over. So before you fold it over, you need to hem everything. That's why you don't see the the edges of it because it's hidden underneath and I can zoom in here to show you what it actually looks like so when you look inside of the drawstring here you can see that hem right in there just like that so the reason that we do this is that you don't want to show the edge of it which can fray or untangle upon itself so imagine this the full doubled length longwise you can begin at this end or the other end that would be at the top. So when you're hemming it, you want to pin it all together. So get little pins just like this and pin it all the way around. And once you do that, you can follow it like a continuous line on your sewing machine. So going this way, this way, 
over like the double length and then meet back at the beginning. After everything is all hemmed, you can go to step two, which is folding it over and connecting both layers together. So once you fold it over, you're going to want to start here. So measure about two inches, give it some space for that drawstring. And then I look to do a little bit back and forth just to help to create that stabilization. And then you're going to follow it all along the edges till you get here so remember to leave that you can mark it with a little pencil to make sure you get the proper measurement and i would measure it across here this way this is a straight line as well all right so once you get all the way around you go here do a little back and forth so that this connects as well and then you're going to go across make sure that's a straight line when you measure it and then i went one more time just to ensure that everything is nice and connected properly. So that means when you look at these seams, this center one is the hem that is hiding the edges. And then these two along the edge that are closest to the edge are what's connecting both layers. This is because you want to keep hiding that hem. So the connecting lines have to be closer to the edge in order to hide the hem. So the one in the middle, that's the hem. These two are what's connecting both layers. So if you have a sewing machine, I can show you how it is that I keep my lines straight when you're connecting both layers of this one side of the skirt. So look at these lines right here. You're gonna keep the very edge of that skirt along those lines, okay? And then when you go back, you're gonna make it either shorter or longer. So pick one of these lines and then continue along those lines. These are different measurements that you can do. And you can do continuous lines following the edge of your skirt. So when you get to a corner, you simply turn it on your sewing machine and continue sewing. And like I said, remember you're gonna do this process twice, once for the front of the skirt and for the back of the skirt. And as you can see, these have two different measurements. So depending on your size, you may need different measurements. Now, the next step is your drawstring. So this is a very narrow, long piece of cloth, okay? Now, for the drawstring, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I wasn't worried about the edges fraying or anything like that because I knew that it would mostly be hidden inside of the skirt, and the only thing that you would see would be the edges. Now, I was debating if I want to put any sort of decoration and stuff at the end, so that might be something that you want to think about if you want to put little things that rattle or pretty things at the end you can do that too if you do want to decorate the drawstring too but I'll show you how I did this so for the measurement just like that okay so measure the width of your waist or your hips and then about half of the length so when you're cutting this when you're cutting your uh, fabric it's only about three inches I would say because you want to make sure that there's enough give here now it is bundled up on itself right now because I tied it together right but if you untangle it you'll see that the width right now is about one and a half inches and it's folded upon itself okay so one side is folded one side hides the hem so if I open this up again, it'll be about that width. And this is about a little inch or so where I'm hiding the hem here for the ends. Now the ends, they're a little bit sloppy, but I'm not too worried about it. But this is about the length of this hem that is folded inside of the drawstring. Okay, so you want to make sure that you always measure a little bit extra whenever you're doing your sewing on your sewing machine. That way you can hide the hems and plan ahead. Measure twice and cut once. And that's just to ensure that when you get both pieces done, you can tie them together and there's enough of the drawstring to tie it together. So for this demonstration, I'm actually gonna take out the drawstring, show you how I put it in, okay? This is what it looks like. It's just like a little rope. But when you finish sewing this drawstring, you're gonna get a little hook 
So this is a crochet hook. You can use anything in the shape. If you don't have a crochet hook, you can get a piece of wire, so like a hanger. If you have a wire hanger, just turn it into a hook. Okay, and that's very helpful. All right, so you're gonna wanna wrap it around itself. Make a tiny little knot. Make sure it's one that you can undo when you get to the other side. Make it tight around the hook. Next, you're gonna wanna bundle up this pocket. So what I mean is, when you put this hook inside, you fold it like that, and you bundle it and bundle it and bundle it. You can see all the layers it's folding on itself in this pocket. Just like that. And you keep going, keep going, ta-da! Now it's at the end, okay? And then you undo this. Make sure you're pulling it through so it doesn't get stuck. So you can see, there it goes, just like that. Take out the hook. Make sure it's not being pulled back in. Undo the knot. And then straighten it out. Make sure you're holding it. Just like that. And so it's at this point when you're done that you can start transferring your design. And then after you're done painting on your design, you can choose whether you want to add some embroidery or sew other things on it. If you want to include gemstones, it's all up to you. Another tip for the skirt, make sure that you are tying it on one side when you're trying to put it on. This makes it a whole lot easier. This way you only have to tie the other side after you wrap it around yourself. Makeup and body paint. Now, as I mentioned before, because I don't currently live in Puerto Rico, some of these ingredients are difficult for me to find. Uh, this is my cat Stormy. Say hi! So, I do have some achote or annatto seed that I got at a grocery store in Puerto Rico. This is pretty cheap. It was only 98 cents. Does it smell interesting, cat? <laughs> I don't think it has very much smell, but it's used normally just as a food dye. So this is a natural edible food dye that people will add to comida criolla. And so you're able to make this achote oil that you will add to alcapurrias or whatever kind of food. But this is also part of the dye that Taino people and even South American tribes would have used because the Taino people in prehistoric times actually migrated up from South America and into the Caribbean. So that's why they're more related to South Americans than Central Americans. When I travel back to Puerto Rico, I'm able to get some of these ingredients, but they're not readily available to me where I currently live, which is why I wasn't able to get other things like jagua. This is because the jagua nut simply grows naturally in South America in places of a more tropical zone. <laughs> you having fun, Katie? I did, however, want to include a TikTok video by this user here, and she explains what jagua is and how to use it specifically for body paint. Okay, quiero aclararle que esto no es un tatuaje. Es una pintura natural que se llama jagua y la sacamos de un fruto, que es este. Y ahora les mostraré cómo es que se hace. Con un cuchillo partirán la cáscara en cuatro hasta sacarlo de adentro y así es como debe salir otros pelan la fruta y la rayan pero así no es como me enseñaron luego con un rallador lo van a rayar completamente y cuando terminen así es como debe quedar Ahora con un trapo que no utilicen, exprimirán todo lo que sacaron. Y listo. Deben saber que las aguas duran máximo dos o tres semanas en tu cuerpo.
So because I don't have these ingredients readily available to me, I used modern day makeup instead. So it's great to know how it was done traditionally, but I've talked to other Taino people that said it's perfectly fine to use modern day makeup and what's just simply available for you. So aside from my modern day eye makeup, this is still the same traditional Taino design that I recreated using red long stay lipstick and black eyeliner. And I think it worked really well because it didn't smudge or anything after dancing and sweating all day at the powwow in the hot sun. Moving forward. So another thing I wanted to address is that, yes, this is a contemporary, modern-day piece of jewelry, but these are real red and black coral that the Taino people and the Caribbean islanders would have worn and would have collected. So I wanted to buy this piece because it's gorgeous, and it was made by an artisan, so a modern-day artist that created this, and I wanted to support them. So this was also given to me as a gift and I wanted to make sure that I was using stones and shark teeth that the Taino people and the islanders would have collected back in their day. But I think this is something that we need to also come to terms with that we're not going to use only old fashioned or traditional methods of jewelry making or even clothing. We're going to build upon that and use our modern day sensibilities of creating these beautiful pieces of artwork. We need to honor the traditions, yes, but we're also going to evolve them. So we're not only gonna be doing things prehistorically the way that Taino people have done in the past, we're also gonna build upon it. So when I get comments saying that this isn't how the Taino people would have dressed, I understand that. But in our modern day, we need to evolve. So we're not only gonna be walking around naked. We need to honor these traditions, yes, but we're going to be doing them in our modern day sensibilities. So we're going to be using cloth that will be more accessible to us because traditionally the Taino used what was accessible to them. So that's going to change with time. Another thing to keep in mind is that in our attempt of preservation, we don't want to misappropriate other Native American or indigenous nations. We want to make sure that this is specifically Taino and not misappropriate their headdresses or their dances or songs. We don't need to be a Native American stereotype and we don't need to dress the same way that we did a thousand years ago to be Taino. I think this is just something to think about, that we're not going to be doing things only in the way that it used to be done. 500 years ago. That's half a thousand years ago. We're going to build upon this. We're keeping these traditions alive. That's what's most important, but we're going to be doing it in a seemingly new way. And so I think this is a way of viewing it as a rebirth of the Taino culture and keeping these traditions alive for future generations and the younger generation. But for now, thank you for watching, and in the future, I'll try to give you more updates and different videos about Taino Espiritismo and my experiences at the modern-day powwows here in the U.S. So I'm from the Taino tribe in the Caribbean. My island is called Boriquen. We may know it as Puerto Rico. Um, and I'm studying the Taino language, trying to preserve it for our future people and preserving the oral tradition. So I, I've been seeing a lot with the younger generation trying to preserve the language, preserving the oral tradition. And now with social media, we can post these videos on YouTube so then they can know the traditions. There's been a big Puerto Rican diaspora and our tribe is even more endangered now. We don't have resources to learn our language. There is no reservation. There is no tribe. There is no recognition of our people by the Puerto Rican 
government or the United States because we're a colony. So we don't have the same rights as other nations, other tribes in the United States, even though we're Americans. And today, I just want to say thank you for including me in your powwow. This is my first powwow ever, and it's my first time. <laughs> This is my first time representing the Taino people and Latin Americans are very ethnically diverse. We're Latino, we're Hispanic, we're African. Some of us in South America also identify as Pacific Islanders. So there's even an Asian Latino community. So I want to use uh, social media platforms like TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, Facebook to help spread the word about other indigenous nations and indigenous tribes that are endangered like the Taino. But a large percentage of Puerto Ricans, 60% of Puerto Ricans have Taino lineage, have Taino ancestry. A large amount of Dominicans, people from the Bahamas all the way down to Trinidad and Tobago by Venezuela, the coast off of Venezuela, have Taino or Arawak Indian lineage. So I want to bring this to light for people here um, in these tribes in the United States, you can help spread awareness as well because you have uh, more privileges than we do and you can help uh, spread awareness about the Taino tribe and preserving our traditions. So thank you so much. Many blessings. Go Guatucan, Han Han Gatu. And thank you for having me here today. Ha home. home thanks for watching make sure to subscribe and as always i have my link tree and a master document to all sorts of taino references and hyperlinks in the description box below so if you like this make sure to check out my channel and other social media for more taino related videos